Hi, if you are a new visitor, welcome. If you are a returning visitor, thanks for tuning in. Um, regardless of if you're new or returning, feel free to subscribe to the channel to be notified of new videos. Um, you can also check out my blog. The link is in my bio, blackcoffeeinthecity.wordpress.com. Uh, I like to do some writing and then also do some videos. So check out both platforms for new updates. So today, I kind of want to discuss my decision to move to Berlin. So a lot of people ask, how did you get here? Like, they're very confused about why I have no connections to the city or the country. Originally, I came to Berlin, and I was only here for less than 24 hours. We came, my friend and I drove from Amsterdam on May Day, which is May 1st, so it's a celebration. All of the streets were closed. There was parades. And we had no idea the person we were coming to visit did not warn us that this was happening on that day. So it took us hours to get to the location we needed to be after arriving in Berlin. Unfortunately, that meant we wasted a lot of the time that we were meant to be exploring the city and having fun. But we went out to dinner. And then we went out to a club. And then ended up leaving the next morning. But it was really love at first sight. Like I, again, spent less than 24 hours here. But I loved the freedom of the city. I loved that people were wearing whatever they wanted when they went out. I got so dressed up because I like lived and worked in D.C. And I was used to wearing heels, tight dresses, short dresses, low-cut dresses. Just strapped to my body dresses, full face of makeup, nails. You know, it just had to be, you had to be so put together in order to get in. And the guys were like, What are you wearing? Like, this is a lot. Put on some jeans and sneakers. And I'm like, What? Like, I don't have to go out and kill myself in heels. Thank you, Berlin. And not only that, but I just really loved the creativity in the city you know you see street artists and artwork everywhere and I was just really inspired and it really spoke to my soul so I ended up coming back to Germany um, four times in total the last time I just visited Berlin previously I had been traveling to other countries and always coming to Berlin but the last time I spent 10 full days here and I decided after that, okay, I want to move. So this was happening every five to six months. So I think after my original visit, I ended up moving about two years later. And it's now been two years since I've been living in Berlin. And I definitely do not regret it. Living in another country, especially in a country that is predominantly white, they speak a completely different language. It has been such a challenge, but it has been such an a learning experience. I think there are times where we're so scared and we just think about all the ways that things can fail, but we really should push ourselves to take risks, try to experience new things, things that may be scary, that may be uncomfortable, that may be painful even, but it really helps you grow as a person and it really helps you learn a lot about yourself. Um, so recently, I did a session with a life coach. So I'm a pretty self-aware person, um, probably, which is why I talk so much. Um, I'm really into connecting with yourself, um, connecting with your not only your heart, but your mind and making decisions that are comfortable for you, but also pushing yourself. So I didn't really get the point of a life coach. I thought it was a scam. I'm like, great, you just pay someone to remind you to do things or like tell you things that you already know about yourself. For some people, they do find it helpful. They do need someone outside of themselves to motivate them. But I, for me, I'm like, I can just put reminders in my phone. You know, I don't need to pay someone to coach me in life. But this, I met this woman at a networking event in Berlin. She was super nice, and she offered a free life coaching session. So I took her up on the offer, and it was actually really informative. So we think that we know so much about ourselves. We think we know ourselves better than anyone else could. But we are very layered, and there's always things that 
we need to learn about ourselves and sometimes you need an outside person to uncover those layers. So I learned a lot of different things. Um, one I will share with you is actually my relationship with money. So I have always been financially responsible. I've always really been taught to save. My grandfather would always tell me every month, put a little bit away from your paycheck so that you can save. And that sort of actually created a toxic relationship with me and money. So I'm obsessed with not spending, essentially. I think, oh, why would I go and treat myself out to eat when I have groceries in the fridge? That's just such a waste. But then there are times in life where we should treat ourselves. We shouldn't feel guilty about taking a trip or buying ourselves something nice if it's within our means. Um, don't limit yourself and punish yourself for wanting nice things and for wanting something outside of the world that you already have. So for me, I've now learned and I'm going to implement this in my life, but I think it kind of also ties into these learned behaviors that we've had, these learned expectations. For me, the learned expectation was to have a nine to five job. That was the dream, right? Like, nine to five job, benefits, retirement, like sounds kind of boring, but I just thought that that's what I needed to do. And this is also a mindset coming from the US because living in Berlin, it is not like this at all. That is not the dream. When people wear suits, they look like such an outsider. You're like, what are you going to court? Like, why are you wearing a suit? Probably in court, you don't even wear a suit. So here I go out Maybe I have a doctor's appointment or something or I'm off during a weekday and I see people in the streets, restaurants are full, streets are full, trains are full. And I think, do you guys not work? But there are a lot of freelancers in Berlin. They make their own hours. They create their own products. They have an independent lifestyle, which doesn't call, like need them to be at a desk and sit in an office and have these nine to five jobs. So I originally came to Berlin to write. I wanted to focus on being creative. And yes, okay, this sounds really crazy. I wanted to be an English writer in a country where German is the first language. But, you know, Berlin is such a creatively supportive city. I thought this is the place to do it. If I'm going to push myself to focus on writing, I need to remove all of the old distractions, all of the old expectations and judgments of my past lifestyle, and I need to start over. So Berlin was it. And I started out at some internships. I ended up working at a newspaper for um, as an editor, writing articles and reviews for them. Then I did a copywriting internship. And that was a bit more of a structured nine to five job. And then I ended up getting a full time job as an editor at a digital agency. And I thought this is it, right? Like, this is the dream. I'm writing and I'm in a nine to five job. This was always what I had imagined that I wanted for myself. And I thought, wow, okay, I came to Berlin, I took all of these risks, I've fallen and I've failed and I've flailed a lot, but it's all paid off. And then I started the job and I still wasn't happy. I had these old expectations of what my life should look like. And I tried to merge them with the life that I wanted in Berlin, I wanted to be a writer. And I wanted a full time job. And I thought, now I have the best of both worlds. I realized I needed to shed those expectations of having this desk job with a contract and retirement and all of these things. I needed to get rid of those expectations and really listen to what it was that I wanted. And I realized I want to be an independent writer. I do not enjoy writing for other people. I do not enjoy writing in other people's voices. I like to create content, write, connect, create videos about things that are important to me. So for me, that meant moving out on my own, starting my own path, constructing my own new reality. And I think anyone is capable of doing this. It may seem scary. It may seem a bit irrational, maybe to friends, colleagues, family. They may think, why on earth? Because I got that a lot. People thought that I was losing it. They're like, yeah, okay, you want to give up a 
great job where you make good money and your house and your car and you want to move to a new country? I did. And in the end, it has taught me a lot about myself. It has connected me with a lot of beautiful people. And in the end, it was worth it. So now I'm on the path to achieving my goals. What about yours? Just sit down. Maybe you don't even need a life coach. You just need some time to think about what you really want. And if you're not happy in your daily life, if you're not happy with what you're doing, it's never too late to change it. Honestly, I was 30 when I decided to move. I would have loved to have done it when I was younger, but I ended up doing it at the time that was right for me. And so I encourage you to sort of just listen to yourself, have a conversation with yourself, write down some dreams and goals and how you can work towards achieving those. So feel free to write comments or maybe you can send me a message. You can also look me up on Instagram by my name, Sarita Braxton. Um, And I really encourage a conversation. So I look forward to hearing from you. And thanks for checking out my videos and feel free to subscribe. Thanks.